Hi, this is going to be a walkthrough on setting up the MRP core ring as well as two MRP sub rings that I have shown here on the screen. And this is a system that had been previously set up, so you'll have to excuse me for just using a single switch to demonstrate the various settings uh, for all of this. So, again, first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with the configuration of the MRP core ring and what we're going to do is we're going to select one switch to be our MRP ring manager um, in this case we will select this switch up at the very top and these other two switches um, are going to be enabled for the MRP protocol but will not be a ring manager um, also when we're in the process of configuring all of these and applying the configurations we're going to make sure that we don't have a loop so in this case what we will have done is we will have broken or di um, simply disconnected one of the ports here um, one of the ports here and possibly even one of the ports there just to prevent a loop from happening and what we're going to do is we're going to go into one of the switches and we're going to go show you on how to configure this so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a factory default switch on 10, 10, 10, 5. Oh, actually, this is a fully default switch, so bear with me. I have not IP addressed this switch yet. So this is high discovery. This is our uh, switch discovery and IP addressing tool and I'm going to give this an IP address of 10.10.10.5 and we're going to fire up the web browser from here admin and private all lowercase are our default usernames and passwords and because this is the first time that we're logging in, it's going to ask us to change it. Uh, this is not a best practice, but I've changed it back to private. So we're logging into the switch. And here we have our login screen. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to go down into switching and we're going to assume that we're going to configure this switch here first. So this will be the first switch that we're going to configure. So we're going to enable layer 2 redundancy for MRP. We're going to turn this on. We're going to define our ring ports and in the case of this switch here um, it's going to be ports 1 and 2 that we're going to utilize for our ring ports, so we would define ports 1 and 2. And again, you can define virtually any port that you want f as a ring port, uh, however your networking is being plumbed. And in this case, one of the switches needs to be a ring manager. We've decided that it is going to be this switch. We will enable that. With this, we will then hit right and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to spanning tree and for spanning tree we're going to disable spanning tree on our ring ports so in this case our ring ports are ports 1 and 2 we will disable them there and that pretty much covers what needs to be done in this switch we will then go into the other switches into this switch here and this switch here and pretty much replicate the settings defining our MRP core ring ports the only difference being in these two switches here we will not enable the ring manager or the redundancy manager so in those two switches that setting will be off so, simple enough so once we've done this the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into the other switches and these are the MRP subring switches. And what we're going to do with all of these switches is we're going to enable the MRP operation. 
we're going to make sure that the redundancy manager is disabled. We're going to define our ring ports and we're also going to define a unique VLAN ID for the MRP protocol. This is not for the data that's traversing the network. It is just for the MRP watchdog packets that get sent out to verify and test the integrity of those rings. And then what we're going to do is we're going to disable spanning tree. So in the case of those switches, what we're going to do is we are going to go into our MRP protocol. The operation will be on. We're going to define the ring ports for these switches here. So in this case it would be say port 9 and uh, I believe this is port 11 and port 9 and 10, 10 and 12. So for example if it were this switch right here that we're configuring it would be port 11 and port 12 and we would define port 11 and port Oh, this switch only has 11 ports so my apologies so if it were say port 10 and 11 uh, it would be these two ports the ring manager would be off and we would give this a unique VLAN ID so in the case of the IP addressing scheme here we used a 10.30 IP addressing scheme so just for simplicity's sake and ease of being able to remember it, we'll use VLAN 30 simply because they are on a .30 subnet. So we will use VLAN 30 for this switch and for all other subsequent switches in this subring down here at the bottom. So this switch, this switch, and this switch would have exactly the same configuration as we've just shown you here. We would then replicate this for these two switches. The only exception being that these two switches here would be on a VLAN ID 40. Again, it's just so that the watchdog packets as they're traversing this subring here do not conflict in this network segment with the watchdog packets of this subring as well as the MRP core ring. So the MRP core ring is on VLAN 0, this is VLAN 30, and then this is VLAN 40 for the MRP protocol. And once we've done this, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into spanning tree. And again, for spanning tree for the ports that we have, in this case it was ports I believe 10 and 11 that we had defined as our um, our subring ports we would then disable spanning tree for those two ports so that then completes this segment of the to do's and last but not least what we're going to do is we're going to configure the subring redundancy management uh, this is probably the only uh, step that is a little bit more involved but it's easy enough and what you need is you need to have a switch that has the subring capability this means that any switch that has a high OS 2A, 3S or 3A management feature capability and with this on those switches and it's just these two switches that need to have that capability because this is where the subnet rings terminate or start and terminate on. This switch does not need to have this, um, this subring capability. So it's just these two switches that need that. And what we're going to do is we're going to log into this one as well as this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to enable the subring and it's under our FuseNet capability. We'll turn the operation on. We will then create a new entry and with this new entry we will call this our wind turbines. And what we're going to do is we're going to define the port 
that this is coming off of. So in this case, it is coming off of port number four going into this subring, which is on VLAN 30. So it'll be port four and it's VLAN 40. Apologies, it's VLAN 30. So it'll be VLAN 30. And we're going to make this the subring manager. So under subring manager mode, it will be manager. And we'll write this. And then we're going to create another one. And this other one is going to be for, say, our solar panels. And for the solar panels, it is going to be on port 3. And it is VLAN 40. And here, too, this is going to be the manager. We're going to enable this. And last but not least, we're going to turn these two subrings as active. So we now have VLAN 30 here, VLAN 40 here, and our MRP VLAN ID being zero. So we know for a fact that we don't have a, um, a conflict in any of our redundancy protocols. Uh, the last thing that we're then going to do is we're then going to take ports 3 and 4 and these ports 2 we're then going to disable spanning tree on. So on this switch I believe it was ports um, we had ports 12 and 2 so ports 12 and we don't have port 12 uh, we'll call it ports 1 and 2 for our ring, ports 3 and 4 for our subring, and we simply then disable the, the spanning tree for those two ports. So that's all that needs to be done for that switch. As far as this switch here, the process is very similar, the exception being that in our subring, instead of it being a manager status, or a um, subring manager mode being manager, we are going to use the redundant manager. And this is going to be for both of these. And we're then going to define the ports, make sure that the VLANs match up, and we simply then click on OK. And this is all that needs to be done. You know, obviously in this switch as well, we would disable the spanning tree on those ports. And at this point in time, we would go into all of the switches and save the configuration. You can either do this by going to load save and then clicking on the save icon down here at the very bottom. Uh, what this does is this will move the configuration from the volatile memory into the non-volatile memory. Uh, a easy shortcut is to click this flashing floppy symbol here. Uh, this is indication that the non-volatile memory is not in sync uh, with the running config, meaning that you have not saved your changes. So anytime you've made a change, this will start flashing, giving you an indication that there are changes that have not been saved. So if you power cycle the switch without saving these changes, you will then revert to your last saved state. So we'll go ahead and save this. As soon as it's saved, this flashing floppy here will stop. And we now have this configuration saved. So with that, what you're then able to do is you're able to connect your individual connections and you should then have a indication within both the MRP that you have redundancy guaranteed here and also within your subring, you should also have a redundancy guaranteed here as well as here. So with this, this will give you the assurance that you have the necessary redundancy in this ring up here as well as your two sub rings. And I hope that this has helped you with your configuration needs. Please feel free to reach out if we can be of additional assistance. Thanks for watching and have a great day.